I'm Jordan Belfort, and this is Sales School. All right, so if you're a business owner, do not let QuickBooks and spreadsheets slow you down anymore. Now is the time to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud-based business system. NetSuite gives you the visibility and control over your financials, inventory, and more. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash school. Got a great topic today, skills training. Has to do with looping here, specific aspect of it in terms of how you tonally handle different objections. In other words, one of the things that I teach with looping, it's pretty you know, obvious, right? The, the sort of the broader levels is that when someone hits you with a common objection, right, um, and then you run your initial loop, right? You know, you'll say, you know, what's well, idea make sense to you? Do you like the idea? And they'll say, yeah, it sounds pretty good. To which you say, exactly, you enter someone's world of their own. They say, yeah, it sounds great. You say, exactly. So in other words, you enter someone's world where they are, right? But let me give you a different take on this, right? So I always say, you know, every sale is the same. You have all the common objections, 12, 14, whichever one you choose based on the industry. And you're going to count doubles with, you know, uh, bad time of year and Groundhog's Day leap year, tax time, Christmas, you get it? Right? But there's, you know, a handful of objections, right? And no matter which objection you get hit with, your standard straight line response is very basic. You know, I hear what you're saying, but let me ask you a question. Does the idea make sense to you? Do you like the idea? Right? Now notice, this is important, this is this is the distinction. So I say, I hear what you're saying, not, oh John, I, I totally hear what you're saying. But does the idea make sense to you? See, I don't, if I, if, I, if I say, oh, I totally understand what you're saying, but those you like, I give away control, I lose power. It's like, oh my God, I understand. But So you don't do that. What, what you want to do is say, I hear what you're saying, you wanna, so you don't break rapport. So I hear what you're saying, fair enough, reasonable, but let me ask you a question. Does the idea make sense to you? Do you like the idea, right? Now you've probably heard me say that, or I've taught that too many times, right? One thing I might not have gone through though with you, because this is in the advanced training course I'm working on now, is that there is one objection that you actually handle differently. You still say the same words pretty much, but you handle the tonality with a different twist, right? So if someone says to me, you know, let me go back to this. You know what my favorite objection is, honestly, or the one I respect the most? I'm not liquid right now. Because at least there's a chance it might be real. In other words, you know, I want to think. What the fuck does I want to think about me? I want to call you blah 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 and blah, blah. Right? It's a not. It's, it's a pure smoke screen for uncertainty, right? But when someone says I'm not liquid right now, there actually might be some credence to the fact that you know maybe they you know thought they could afford and they didn't understand the full price. The point is, it might be real, right? So I handle it differently. So watch how I handle. Let me think about it. So it's just, oh, it sounds good, Jordan, let me think about it. And I say, I hear what you're saying, Bill, but let me ask you a question. Does the idea make sense to you? Do you like the idea? They say, I want to think about it. I say, I, he I, I hear what you're saying, we're in rapport, but let me ask you a question. Hypothetical tone. But if they say I'm not liquid right now, I change my tonality, and I also alter, I say, I, I understand what you're saying, Bill. So I actually give that credence. I actually, in other words, if you just say, well, I hear what you're saying, but this is make, in other words, I, I want him to understand, you know, I, I get it. You might not be liquid right now, and I've been there too, so I, I, you know, that I can understand. It goes back almost to the same way you handle when someone says, yeah, I don't trust you, Jordan. That's why I'm not, I said, well, that I can understand. You don't know me, I don't have a track record. Right? And in that case, which would be, you know, I'll, the second part of our first I'll say, but let me take a moment to reintroduce. I, I actually will show them how they can trust me. Well, the same thing goes with this objection too. Notice when I say they might actually not be liquid, don't think for a second that if they say I'm not liquid, I'm like, oh, okay, well then I'm not, all right, I'm sorry I wasted your time. I'll never do that. Notice what I'm saying is in order to make sure I stay in tight rapport and they know that I care, I'll shoot them a tonality, I'll tell them, I say, you know, I understand you're not living right now. Like, you know, that, I, I understand you're not living right now. I get that. We all go through those 
You see the difference versus I hear what you're saying versus, oh, I totally understand that, John. But let me ask you a question. I go back then, this is the idea. So either way, I end up going forward. But the point is, is that when it comes to money, I don't want to be just so I hear what you're saying. I actually give them some, okay, I, I totally understand that, John. But let me ask you a question. Now, here's the deal. Once they hit me with that, by no means does that mean I lose my state of certainty. All I'm going to do now is, well, fair enough, let me ask you a question. Does the idea make sense to you? Do you like it? Do you know why? Because now I'm going to show them how they can actually afford it. Either through a financing option, a payment plan, or I might even go through a step-down sale. You know, step-down sale, right? Where essentially I start slowly but surely reducing the size of the order I ask for as I ask for the order each time. So if there's four times I ask for the order, I might ask for 20000 of X the first order, 10000 the second time, 5000 and then down to 1000 the last time, with 1000 the minimum I'll take, right? In other words, I'm, just because they say they're not liquid, by no means does that mean I give up. All I'm saying is, is that totally, I want them to understand that I care. Like I am, because you know, listen, I understand you're not liquid, and I totally understand you don't know me and don't trust me, but what I don't understand is, let me fucking think about it. That's a nonsense. So the way I handle it totally is different, and it has a very big impact on what happens, you know, in the mind of the prospect, because when you say something, you know, oh, I, I understand that, they're like, oh, okay, he cares. He's not just there to make a sale. But let me ask you a question. Does the idea, does the program make sense to you? Do, you? do you like it? Do you like what I have, right? And now they'll be like, well, yeah, it sounds pretty good. And I'll say, exactly. It really is a great idea. Now, in fact, let me say this. And now, just so you know, I'm still going to loop back, create massive certainty, focus a bit more on some of the cost-benefit ratios, and if there's a financing option, I'll certainly start revealing that right now, and then go to my step-down sale, you get it? But that's the distinction. Remember, tonality is so subtle, so powerful. So there's a big difference between saying, I hear what you're saying, versus I totally understand what you're saying, John. But let me ask you a question, versus I hear what you're saying, but like, I end up in the same spot, but in each instance, I telegraph certain things. In the first instance, where they say, you know, I want to think about it, what I basically say is, I hear what you're saying, we're in a pool, but I know you're full of shit. Like, you get it? Like, I hear what you're saying, John, but you're kind of full of shit. Versus, I totally understand that. But let me ask you a question. Try that today and every day going forward and watch the difference it makes. It has a massive impact on the mindset of your prospect. Love you all, and we'll talk again tomorrow. All right, I know everyone's talking about CBD these days, but there's really only one brain you can know about, and that is Lord Jones. See, if you know me, then you know that I won't even touch something unless it's the absolute top product of its kind. Best cars, big houses, a boat. It's not the best. I don't want it anywhere near me. That's why whenever I want CBD, I go to Lord Jones. Lord Jones is the gold standard. Let me hear it. The gold standard of CBD. And you know that means a lot when it comes from me. For years, Lord Jones has been changing people's lives with their premium CBD products from world-class skincare to tinctures and gel capsules to decadent gumdrop confections. If you're curious about what CBD can do for you, trust me, you want to start with the absolute best. Lord Jones is crafted with the highest quality ingredients and premium hemp-derived CBD that's lab-tested for purity, strength, and consistency. In fact, Lord Jones has been featured in the New York Times, People, Vogue, Vanity Fair, and more. And now, they're inviting you to experience the finest CBD products available. And I'm telling you, you're going to love it. So here's how you get started. Go to lordjones.com slash school to get 25% off your first order. That's lordjones.com slash school for 25% off your first order, lordjones.com slash school.